Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 13 of Solar Civilization. Yes, lucky 13. As you will see, it is not brilliantly lucky by the end of the episode. But anyway, um, now for what I kind of left with uh, last episode. This is the landing of the temporary base, which is basically a lab with a bunch of life support, and uh, not a huge amount else. It's basically just um, a test to kind of get used to putting bases places, I guess. Um, a craft will be landing later in the episode uh, with a crew of Kerbals, two of which will be in the lab, one will stay in the pod, um, but you'll see that later and we'll see how it goes. The lucky 13, much like the Apollo 13 moon landing. Obviously I'm not giving anything away, but uh, 13 is not a lucky number. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm just gonna, well I've just deorbited it with, deorbited this with the rest of that uh, well, not the rest of the fuel, but with the fuel that transferred this out here. And now we're on to internal power. We have uh, quite a lot of fuel, enough, um, more than enough fuel to land, but not enough to get back to orbit. Um, but we won't need to, because we have another craft coming, which will be doing all of that. And I have picked out that little, uh, little flat piece of land between all those craters. Um, the geologist will be very happy. It's, uh, you know, very geologically... Uh, interesting, there's a little mountain there, lots of craters, and it is, you know, pretty hard to land on pinpoint for the, for the first time in this uh, space program, we'll be um, having to actually bullseye where we land, which we don't tend to have to do um, on moon landing so far, we just kind of land roughly where we need to be in a biome, which are pretty big. But anyway, now we're back into one times time accelerate for uh, the landing, which is nice and gentle, we have tons of fuel, so I took this uh, really gently. A little overdid it there, but we came down. You can hardly see it moving, but there we go. A nice touchdown. Um, a little bit on a slope, but that should be fine. And uh, yeah, everything looks pretty great with that. But now, um, the Sun Diver is two days away from being in an optimal position to uh, take some science from down close to the Sun. So we'll jump ahead to that. Now it is, uh, well, it's where it needs to be, so we'll take some uh, science from near the sun, 110 science from uh, the Mystery Goo unit, we'll transmit that back, get a, a little over 30 science, that'll go nicely. Um, the transmission is obviously a lot less than what you'd usually get um, from, you know, bringing it back, but when you do lots of experiments, it's, it's, you get a hefty amount of science, I mean, this is really pushing towards the advancement of my space agency, um, which is a, uh, of course, where we aim to be, and uh, I do have a temperature uh, gauge on here, or a thermometer for those of you who call it what it's actually called. Um, so we'll, uh, and because we're close to the body, we can take a little scan and send that out. But yeah, that's a decent amount of science, but this is basically dead in space now. It could act as a communication satellite, I guess, but it's on a highly elliptical solar orbit. So we'll jump ahead to going to the moon with our three astronauts or kerbinauts or whatever you want to call them. We have Gene Rod, Filling and Luke. Luke and Gene Rod, new uh, new recruits, but Filling has been on a couple of missions now, so he is the commander while, uh, is it Bob Kerman's on station and Jeb and Bill and uh, Franklin Kerman are heading out to Juno. They'll be getting there, uh, well, not too f too long from now, less than three months, and the fine tune is in 18 days, as you can see in the Kerbal alarm clock. Uh, this is, again, my reusable rocket. Hopefully this will go well, but uh, who knows with the unlucky numbers. But it's looking pretty good, the ascent's fine. Uh, I often tilt over a little late just because aerodynamics kind of holds me in place, especially with this rocket. It's a little annoying, so I've got to try and figure that out. But you know, um, everything's good, so we'll ditch that. Ditch the fairings because we're quite high up now because that's the new setup of the rocket that happened last episode. That first stage gets us much, gets us much higher. Um, then we'll just... Uh, burn into orbit with a stage which has a little uh, more than enough fuel to get us into orbit actually uh, but um, I keep uh, throttling down because I was thinking of switching over to that la trying to land that before I need to make the burn and uh, but it you know I, I decided just to kind of do it how I usually do it um, but this has all the experiments same lander from Mimus but anyway we skip ahead and it looks pretty good except we fell short of land so uh, even though we had good deploy on all four ship parachutes, unlike last time, it's going to land in the ocean at 12 meters a second, so, uh, you know, there's not much that can be done. We've got to kind of look out for that, because with a heavier payload, it doesn't get as high up, so it, um, 
it won't go as far. So we've got to figure out how with heavier payloads we're going to get it to land without putting a bunch more fuel on it. So uh, the first unlucky thing on the 13th episode is uh, the loss of this stage. So this is, this is now a much more ex ex expensive mission than originally thought. But anyway, back in orbit and let's head to the moon. We'll forget about that stage. We'll be able to reuse more in the past. And that's already flown on two missions. So, you know, we got three missions out of that stage. That's pretty good because I have landed one twice. Um, but now we must head out to the moon with Morpheus 3. Um, it's got its detachable science up at the top, so it doesn't have to take any unnecessary w mass back to orbit. Um, yeah, I quite like this lander, actually. I want to improve it a bit, uh, because, you know, it's it's got a few shortcomings. And it's got a bunch of lights on the outside, just in case we're in the uh, on the moon in the night, and I want to put a couple of them on the lab, because you can detach them with the Kerbal t attachment system. Um, talking of nighttime. Someone did mention to me in the comments of one of my videos, uh, and actually it's been mentioned to me quite a few times because I know it's annoying, um, In on the dark side uh, you can hardly see anything, mainly because, you know, it's the dark side, that's how it works, you know, there's no light. And YouTube darkens things and, you know, stuff's not great. Um, so I am going to get the, uh, what is it, the um, ambient light enhancer, uh, because my, whenever I try and brighten it in post-production, it just looks really naff, but um, I've never used that word ever. Why did I pick now to use the word naff? Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, I will be getting, I'll be getting the mod so I can just be like, oh, we're in the dark, let's turn the light up a bit. Because, you know, for the purposes of videos, it's kind of unfair to go, hey, look at this black screen, enjoy my videos. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'll be sorting that out. Uh, but anyway. That's, uh, well, we're getting close to the moon. I mean, this stage will push us all the way out and hopefully circularizes around the moon. It's obviously using the Vestra engine, no longer my nu most efficient engine. I unlocked the nuclear engines a while ago, but it seems a little overpowered and not actually mass efficient to use that here because the en the mass I'd save in fuel would just be made up by the nuclear engine. And, you know, I want to save that for other things. Um, but anyway, there's our encounter. That's good. I'll just bring it down a little bit, you know to about 50 kilometers where I tend to put it. I'm going to start putting it lower though because Oberth effect and all that stuff. Um, and we've still got a little bit of fuel that'll help us out because, uh, yeah. But anyway, I've noticed that this was in orbit and this is a, uh, actually I put this so that it would deorbit itself because the periaps is within the atmosphere but obviously the game doesn't deorbit things, um, well it doesn't load physics when you're not actually on the craft. So I'm going to deorbit this now. Uh, while that other craft is heading out to the moon. It's kind of my effort to clean up space because it's starting to annoy me. I might send up a small craft with a grabber arm just to pull a few things out of space because uh, it's kind of annoying me. Again, there's the darkness. I will actually try and boost that in post-production, um, or boost the brightness. I mean, it's illuminated by fire now, but, you know, uh, next episode I'll have the uh, ambient light plug-in. Um, so, yeah, that'll be good. But it looks pretty nice now. Um, weird camera angle. Uh, nothing seems to be burning off. It's because it's those engines and fuel tanks are really heat resistant for some cr reason. They like hardly ever burn up, even from a really eccentric orbit. Although um, when I deorbited my uh, carrier for that video, it did really destroy everything. But yeah, we um, we uh, this is you know going to hit the ground at least, so we don't have to deal with this anymore. And I've started uh, taking the debris out of the ocean because I imagine the navy would pick that up and. I mean, we're working very closely with the military now, obviously. They're testing our technology. I believe in the last episode, um, I showed off the first fighter jet. Uh, not space-borne yet, but hopefully one day we'll have something like that, just in case of uh, uprising of some kind, I'm not sure. But anyway, that blows up on the ground. And uh, But now we're at the moon, and um, we're going to circularize, obviously. That's, you know, standard kind of thing you'd do. Uh, yeah, I also noticed um oh no we still have electric charge weird i i noticed a while ago that um not a while ago when i was recording this that i hadn't opened the solar panels uh, but i still have an electric charge apparently i didn't think it would last that long but you know whatever that's good i guess stops the uh kerbals getting cold um but i'll open the solar panels soon i did put a lot of electric charge on this because it might have to spend a bit of time in the night on the moon but i think it's about like 20 day a 20, I'm not sure how long the days are, but they're very long on the moon, actually. So, um, I think I'll probably be gone by nightfall. 
I'm only staying here a day, which will actually turn out to be quite a lot of days. Um, but anyway, we run out of fuel on that, annoyingly. Um, so we have to use a bit of fuel from the lander, but that should be fine. We have uh, enough Delta V to land and return from the moon. But uh, the problem, the problem, the, the main fuel problem is that we have to land at a specific target. And I've, as I've said, we've never had to do that before. Um, we've just kind of landed in the kind of place we need to. Obviously, we've rendezvoused in space, but that's much easier. So uh, this might be a little fuel consuming. And the number of the episode really uh, doesn't doesn't bode well for us. Anyway, we'll open up the solar panel so we'll get a little bit of power. And we have tons of life support. As I was just checking, I was like, did they run out of electric charge? And, you know, it's fine. But anyway, I've skipped ahead to uh, the deorbit burn because there was a weird glitch with the resources menu. Again, that's in night time, so I foolishly turn on the lights, but it doesn't really help. So I'll, again, try to boost that. Um, I'm, often I say, oh, I'll boost that, and then kind of forget because it's, you know, it's not permanently on my mind. Um, but I, obviously if I get the light plug in, it'll be much better, so... Uh, you know, it'll be better videos, and <laughs> it's, yeah, people have been saying about it, and that's fair enough, it actually annoys me, um, so, you know, not, not people commenting, um, the darkness annoys me, mm, you know, it's fine. And Mechjeb has decided to, uh, put a little marker where we're gonna land, I'm sure that'll help. It's like, oh, yeah, I know where I'm gonna land, guy, but I could have put the, uh, landing autopilot on, but I think it's horribly f fuel inefficient, and I don't want to overuse Mechjeb, so, you know, I'm you know, gonna just do it myself. But I need to burn south, obviously, because we're gonna uh, be landing at the target, not north of the target. And I, uh, I'm kind of regretting picking such a hard place to land. It's kind of either in the crater or at the right place. So, uh, but the geologists were insistent that we landed somewhere with interesting geological features. So uh, we had to appease them, obviously, because uh, this is all about science and. Uh, um, let's say Gene Rod is the biologist. Yeah, he is, he's a biologist. He was like, no, we're landing somewhere with a mountain and like three craters. I don't care how hard it is to land at or how stuck I'll get on the moon. I mean, what? You didn't hear that, but yeah, um, you'll see. Uh, yeah, so it'll be good for science and um, that's always uh, always wonderful. So we'll just, uh, slow ourselves down now. I'm always really terrible at landing at a target. I'm always like, when do I slow myself down? This isn't how I do it, but basically, I still don't know how to do it. You kind of just slow down in the right place, I guess. You've got to just try and balance slowing down and losing altitude, because I'm still going very fast right now. Um, but my altitude isn't very high, because I always come in kind of, you know, low and fast. That's how I like doing landings, I guess. I don't know. And I think it's more fuel efficient. Although I... maybe not. I have no idea. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just pretend that I know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I burn slightly upwards um, to, uh, you know, try and arrest my descent. And we're only falling very slowly, but our orbit, you know, foretells that we will be falling, shor uh, falling short of the target if we keep burning like that. But I need to do another bit of a burn south, because we're going to come in in that crater rather than a little patch of land. There was a perfectly huge field of, like, l flat land just on the other side of the crater, but no. Gene Rod was like, oh, well, we've got to land here, because this is where the bio the biology, the, uh, the geology is, is to be done. And it was like, oh, fine, you know, we'll do it. I mean, I guess. I mean, we're getting a lot of funding from uh, geological enthusiasts, you know, philanthropists. I mean, you know, we've got to get funding somehow. Um, but, you know, that's that's all storytelling not particularly true, so we don't have to worry too much. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's it's still quite a nice place. I actually quite ha like how it looks. I mean, I like it when there's like mountains on the moon. Um, one of this, uh, there's this really nice picture of the rover on the uh, on the real moon with uh, uh, with a big like hill behind him, and I think it looks really cool. And I do look how that ri like how that ridge looks. So that's basically why I picked a land here. And obviously because of the, the geologists, obviously, but um, mainly because of that mountain. It looks really cool. And if I brought a rover, no doubt I'd drive to the top of it. Or if I um, had a huge amount of extra fuel, no doubt I'd fly to the top of it. Or if I had some kind of magical RCS pack on the back of all my Kerbals that could get me to most places on the moon, I'd... Oh wait, I'll super do that! Yeah, I'll probably fly there in the next episode. Um, but now we're coming down, Moon Lab as I've called it. 
very inventive. I'm a hugely inventive person. But we're coming in a little shallow, but Moon Lab still has quite a lot of fuel, so it can fly over. Um, talking of having sufficient or a lot of fuel, this may not. Because of how uh, because I came down a little short, you could see I almost landed in that crater and I had to, you know, kind of land in the right-ish place. Um, so I have to use a little more fuel, a little more fuel than I thought I'd have to use. And consequently, that leaves me with a little too little fuel. Although I don't know why I've been, I haven't really been cagey, but I'm probably going to call this episode Get Stuck on the Moon. So yeah, we are, when we land, we will be stuck on the moon until I drop a small fuel supply. I'm thinking how I'll get off is to uh, drop a small fuel tank with um, a, a cable attachment pipeline. You see I only have 610 delta V and that's enough to get into orbit but probably not back. But I still have to kill another like 40 meters a second which will actually probably translate to more like 55. So well, actually no, I'll tell you now, it translates to a lot more than that. I have about 500 meters a second delta V by the time I land. And that's not even enough to get to orbit. So, and I was hoping that if I ditched enough things like the science module and a few lights and things, I'd have enough delta V. But that didn't really change it. So, yeah. So that's not great. So I'll probably be dropping a fuel tank in the next episode. But yeah, we've got a long time. We've got a few launches until then. We're going to spend a few days on the surface. So, why worry about that until we absolutely have to? Um, and then I decide, I'm going to send more fuel, I might as well try and get closer to the target, but end up not really doing it. Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, Moon Lab still has fuel um, and could easily get over here. So I, uh, I, I moved to Moon Lab, I, I ignited the engines, I flew over, it was actually a really cool flight. Um, it was obviously being recorded, I mean that's logical. I'm having an annoying resources tab glitch, which is annoying me. Um, but then, what Fraps decided to do with the footage of the... You, I didn't cut this out, it was me going crazy trying to click on the resources menu. It was really annoying me, it wouldn't go away. But basically, Fraps was like, you know what, I'm not going to record KSP. I'm going to record your folder system so that you don't get the footage of um, this. Basically, yeah. You see, now this is much closer to the, uh, to the, to the lander, but Fraps didn't record it. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, nothing I can do. Um, because I'd quick save, then looked over and I was like, oh, you're recording my file system, great. That will be very interesting footage, which sucks. But anyway, I've sped this up because it's kind of just walking around and moving people and getting some science, which you've seen before many a time and you've most likely done it yourselves and that sort of thing. I'll just put a flag standard just saying where I, uh, where I landed East Crater and my first attempt at a temporary base or something and, you know, it's... Uh, commanded by Filling Kerman, the uh, great, you know, Kerbal. Now we're going to get the other one out. I think this is Luke Kerman. Oh my god. I have a Kerbal called Luke. No doubt if there is a space battle, he will win it because, you know, he's Luke Kerman. Oh god, I hope some. Awesome. I didn't think about that. I was like, oh, Luke, that's a normal name. I'll hire him. Luke's a good name. But, yeah, didn't even think about Luke Skywalker. Jesus. Okay. But yeah, he's a. Uh, uh, he's very talented with light swords. We'll uh, see that. But anyway, I take the experiments. I've already grabbed them and put them in the base and then fire this off because that's always fun to watch. And then that all crumbles. And then uh, Gene Rod just takes a quick little uh, EVA report. But I still don't have enough Delta V to get to orbit. But uh, uh, I think, the hell with that. Let's go and put some lights on that base. Um, Wow, this is crazy jittery at four times time accelerate. But, he, but even with the light on his back, he flies quite, quite levelly. Obviously, he has no flying skill compared to Luke Skywalker. I mean, Luke Kerman, obviously, is what I meant. Um, but oh, now I'm really happy that I hired Luke. Fantastic. Uh, if only he wasn't stuck on the moon. Yep. Anyway, uh, but it will, it will be fine. Like I said, in the next episode, I will send a little fuel supply and it won't even matter it'll be on a probably on a reusable rocket and it'll it'll be on it'll be as a little side launch to another launch so no one will even notice um and we don't even have to tell the funders that we screwed up so yeah this has been uh this has been ksp with tape i hope you've enjoyed this episode i will see you next time